Okay, so here's a, an attempt at doing a, a little video presentation of what uh, I plan on going through in class as yet another test of our, our concept here. So we're going to start out talking about PLCs, Programmable Logic Controllers. Uh, the first thing we want to do is the what. What are they? Well, a PLC is a Programmable Logic Controller. Uh, what's it used for? to control machineries and processes. And uh, the word programmable means that you can change it. You can change it to do different things. It stores the instructions, which is what really makes it very valuable. Well, where did they come from? In other words, who came up with the idea? And there's a particular individual who's kind of a, a character see if this link works. His name is Richard Morley. And he's still around. He came up with it back in the 60s. He came up with uh, the concept of using programmable controllers. And if you wanted to check out this link, I'll, I'll post the notes and you'll be able to, to, to click on it. Uh, last semester, I, I had assumed that the guy wasn't around anymore, but Last semester, some of the students found this website, so he's uh, he's out there having a, having a good time on his Harley in this picture. So he's still in business, still uh, dealing with uh, programmable controllers. So that's a little little history there. And of course, there's other companies that make them, but when did they come about? Like I said, back in the '60s. And it was, uh, well, why? It cuts down on the number of moving parts that you need, relays, which uh, can wear out over time. And probably the biggest reason is it's, it's easy to change. You can reconfigure these things without having to, uh, you know, un unconnect, you know, disconnect things, rewire them, put in new equipment. You can uh, sit down and make changes in the software that are, are pretty cool, and that's some of the stuff we're going to be doing in the class. Uh, they're much more reliable because there's there's fewer things to break. Smaller, faster, cheaper, a lot easier to troubleshoot, easier to wire in, and, and flexibility, that's really the same as easy to change. Where are they used? Well, the, the main place that we're concerned with is wind turbines, but they're also used a lot of other places, they're used in aircraft. Any, any manufacturing uh, facility is going to be full of these things and uh, uh, hospitals, the devices that control traffic lights, um, lots of different places. If you want to break it down into different components, the key parts are uh, the power supply, the I.O., which is shorthand, and you'll see this used a lot of places for input-output. So you have modules that you connect to input devices, like sensors, push buttons, and output modules that connect to output devices, buzzers, motors, uh, anything that, uh, indicator lights, things like that. Then you have the uh, central processing unit, the processor, the brain, if you will, and then the programming device, which for the most part is going to be a, a personal computer, a PC, some kind of a console. Here's an example of a fixed I.O. device. Uh, it says here it's discrete. That means that everything is included in this device. In other words, you don't have separate input-output. The inputs are up here. The outputs are down here. This is an Allen Bradley Micrologix. We'll be working with these to get those basic concepts of how to program and uh, we'll be using these particular devices. But you connect your inputs directly here, your outputs here. Other PLCs have separate, well we probably have a picture of them here. Here's another type of uh, fixed I.O. made by a company called Monocon. And this is an illustration and you'll get a chance to see this in the wiring lab too of uh, DIN rail. And uh, I'll try to bring some of this to class just to make sure you understand it. This is a looking at the side 
this is pretty standard in industry to have these these rails that the devices snap onto. And then to remove the devices, this is a spring-loaded clip that you would pull down and then lift the device out and uh, up off of there. Uh, some people have the tendency to want to slide slide the device off the rail, and that's not uh, not the way to do it. And here's a modular input-output type of device where you have separate modules for inputs and outputs in the processor and the power supply. Those are rack mounted so you have these slots also could be called a card cage where you have connections on the back that the cards fit into when you slide them in there. And this is an illustration of how this particular one has a bar that locks it in place. Uh, Real-world devices, they, they interface with things like sensors, uh, like I mentioned before, push buttons. Those are going to be on the input. The output is going to connect to motors, indicator lights, buzzers. This is an example of wiring, and we'll talk more about ladder diagrams. But L1, we're talking about alternating current here, is hot. L2 is neutral. So... This is connected to common, just to give you a little preview of the way this works. When this, this is a, a spring-loaded push button, when you push the button down, you have current flowing through here into this input. And then the processor, the PLC, sees that, and that would, you could cause something to happen. You could write a program to make a light come on, make a motor come on, uh, make a buzzer go off, all sorts of different things. These are just different types of switches. This is a limit switch. This is a float switch. Uh, some are normally open. Some are normally closed. We'll we'll work on the uh, getting familiar with some of the symbology here. But the concept is the same for all of these. You push the switch down. You have a connection here, a short circuit, right? In other words, current can flow through here, and the circuit is completed through this common here. Here we're looking at a, a simple ladder diagram. You have a switch. This is a lamp. Schematic. This is the symbol for a, a, a lamp in a ladder diagram. Close the switch. The lamp goes on. Right. The current can flow through here. Goes through the filament in the lamp. Causes the lamp to glow. And then it, the electrons return through neutral. So you have a complete path to flow there. Uh, this is shown the same connection to an input card just like we looked at. So you would have a, a connection from your hot terminal to your switch, from the switch to the light, and then the other side of the light would be connected back to neutral for your complete path. This is a diagram and it's a, it's a little bit, if you don't have any experience with uh, electricity, electronics, it's probably a little confusing. That's okay, we'll, we'll get it down. Some of these, we just talked about the switch. Here you have a positive and a negative. So that means that we're talking about uh, direct current here, DC. So you close the switch, current flows through here. This is a resistor that's just used to limit current. Uh, this is a light emitting diode. When current flows through it, it's going to light up. This is another light emitting diode, but it's inside a device. This light emitting diode comes on. This is a semiconductor, a transistor, and this light causes this connection. It causes this to conduct. These resistors are just there to limit current, so you can you can really ignore those. And this diode is just there to only allow current to flow in one direction. The, the concept of optical isolation is that current flow here causes current flow here, but there isn't an electrical connection between them. That's used uh, a lot of times when you have real low voltage and you want to control something that's fairly high voltage. And it's the same concept that works with relays. Uh, again, this is a little bit advanced. If it's confusing you, don't worry about it. We'll come back to it. Uh, this is a DC version of an input card. 
The only difference here is just instead of uh, AC, instead of having hot and neutral, you have positive and negative. Same concept, switch is closed, current flows through this device, and the, the processor sees that and recognizes that as a, a one. In other words, it's, uh, it's active, it's true. So when you have current flowing into an input, we're going to use different words. You could say that the input is true. You could say that the input is on. You could say that the input is active. They all amount to the same thing. These are all just different versions of the switch. All right, and now to an assignment. I'm going to post this uh, as an assignment. I want you to do a brief definition of each of these things, each of these words. And you should be able to get that out of your textbook, or if you don't have a textbook yet, uh, you should be able to go online and get a pretty good, uh, you, you know, you don't have to write a book on it. A few sentences or even even less is, is good for, for each of these. All right, let's see how this uh, how this works out.